So today we're going to put everything together, what we've been um, going over for like the last uh, four lessons, okay? And so it's it's just applying what we've learned and pulling the vectors out of the, the text, okay? So a boat heading west crosses a river with a velocity of 15 kilometers per hour relative to the water. So, okay, we have two objects. We have the boat and we have water, right? Okay, and we have the velocity and it's 15 kilometers per hour and it's west, okay? So we're gonna let, we're gonna use subscripts, okay? And you should use subscripts. We're gonna use B for boat and W for water. Okay, so B equals boat and W for water. Okay, and so what we have is V, B, ah, sorry, V sub B, W, right? So V sub B, W, the velocity of the boat relative to the water, and we know it's 15 kilometers per hour west. So this is equal to 15 kilometers per hour west. Okay. Now, a few things. We have the magnitude of this vector, right? It's 15 kilometers per hour. This is the direction. So they don't give you an angle because they say it's west. It's directly west, okay? So we're gonna draw a diagram in just a little bit, um, but I wanted to go over that with you, okay? All right, so then the next thing is, then we have the river. I'm gonna switch colors on us, okay? The river, which is also water, has a velocity of five kilometers per hour due north relative to the ground. So we have water again, right? That's the object. And it's moving five kilometers per hour and it's due north, so, so directly north and it's relative to the ground, okay? So we're gonna use, we're gonna use G for ground. Okay. So what this is giving us is it's V, the velocity um, of the water with respect to the ground. Now, so the ground is like, you think about a river, okay? The river is flowing at, at a certain velocity and it's relative to like underneath, there's ground underneath that river, right? So that water is going across the ground and it's going across the ground at this speed in this direction, okay? So this is the velocity of the water um, relative to the ground. So this would be V sub W G. Okay. And what we know about that is that it's five kilometers due, five kilometers per hour due north. So five kilometers per hour due north. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in green, I'm going to draw in, okay, what are we trying to find? We're trying to de determine the boat's velocity relative to the ground. So we want to find, okay, V sub and the boat relative to the ground. So we want to find V sub B G, okay, the velocity of the boat relative to the ground. So we got to write an equation, okay? So our equation is going to look like this, the velocity of the boat relative. Yeah, I meant to do green. Hold on a second, guys. <laughs> I'm going to erase this and start over again right here. Okay. So I want this to be V sub BG. And this is going to equal, okay, so we can start, we want to start with B. Remember this? We, we can relate, we can have, we have the velocity of the boat relative to the water and then the water, water relative to the ground. So that would give us the velocity of the boat relative to the ground. So this is going to be V sub BW and then plus, and then V sub WG. Okay, but these are vectors, right? So we need to add these two vectors. And if we add these two vectors, we're going to get this one. Okay, so to do this, this is a fairly, this is actually a fairly simple problem. Okay, the direction of this, we know we're going 15 kilometers per hour and we're going west. So that would look like this. 
So I know this is north, this is south, this is west, and this is east. And I'm going west. I'm going in this direction, right? And because I'm going in that direction, that's negative 15 kilometers. per hour. Okay. So what we have is because of this, because it's going directly west, we have a horizontal component to, to this vector, but no vertical. So we're going to use the sub X and sub Y to show the, the horizontal and the vertical. Okay. So this is V sub BW X is equal to negative 15 kilometers per hour. That's the horizontal component. And then the vertical component, we're going to label V sub B W Y. And that is, there's no vertical component. So that'd be zero kilometers per hour. Okay. So then back over here. Okay. So now we need to do this one. So this vector is five kilometers per hour north. So again, this is north, this is west. I almost wrote south there. This one's south and this one's east. And we're going five kilometers per hour north. So that'd be in this direction. And it'd be positive because we're going up. So five kilometers per hour. So that means V sub um, WG X is equal to, well, we didn't go horizontal at all, right? All it's going is vertical. So that means this one is zero kilometers per hour. And the, um, the vertical piece, it's all vertical, right? So that'd be V sub WGY, and that would be positive five kilometers per hour. Okay, so we need to add these two together in order to get V sub BG, right? So we need to find the horizontal components, right? These are the horizontal components. And then these are the vertical components. Okay, so V sub BG X, the horizontal component to it, would be negative 15 plus zero. And that would be in kilometers per hour. So that'd be negative 15 kilometers per hour. And V sub BG y the vertical component would be zero plus five kilometers which would give you five kilometers per hour okay so we're going to draw our, we're going to draw a diagram okay so we have this and we're going to go this would be north this would be south west and east i know i have to go 15 to the left so this would be negative 15 kilometers per hour. And then I have to go up five. So up five. So I'm going to need to go ahead in this direction. Okay, so that's my resultant vector. And I'm going to need to find alpha and I'm going to need to find this angle theta that I rotate, okay? So let's find, okay, let's find the resultant vector first, okay? So that, that would be V sub, um, v sub BG would equal the square root of, and it would be negative 15 squared plus 5 squared. So grabbing a calculator and we're going to square root. And I keep getting that second square root and then negative 15. Make sure the negative is in parentheses and squared and then plus five squared. And we get 15.8. 
and that'd be 15.8 kilometers per hour. Okay, so now we need to get our angle. Our angle would be alpha, and alpha would equal tan inverse of five over 15. And so second tangent, five divided by 15. And we get 18.4, so that makes it 18 degrees. Okay, so that makes this angle right here 18 degrees. All right, so this is 180 degrees right here. If we go all the way from here to here, right? And so this 18 degrees is part of the 180, so we need to use the 180 to figure out theta. So my theta is going to be, uh, we're going to start with 180 degrees because that's angles connected to 180 degrees. And we got to think, okay, did I go past 180 or did I stop before 180? So I stopped before, right? So I'm going to have to subtract the 18 degrees, okay? And that would give you theta as being 162 degrees. Okay. So now we have it. Okay. So the velocity of the boat of the boat relative to the ground would be 15.8 kilometers per hour at a hundred at an angle of 162 degrees. Ah, sorry. Okay. So here we go. We have it. So V sub BG is equal to 15.8 kilometers per hour. All right, and at 162 degrees. Now, another way you could say this is V sub BG is equal to 15.8 kilometers per hour. And we could say we're going to go 18 degrees and we'd be going north of west. All right, and sorry, and so that so this is this is actually the number value for the direction, and this is a number value along with words that we need to use to describe it. So you can't you cannot say this would be completely wrong, okay? If you said fifteen point eight kilometers per hour at eighteen degrees, okay? All right, so two ways of explaining it, okay? I prefer this one, okay, because we can use this to find other stuff if we need to. So for this next example, all right, we have a plane's velocity is at 510 kilometers per hour, 65 degrees north of east relative to the air. This is when it's relative to the air, the plane relative to the air, that's called airspeed, okay? And then the wind is blowing 90 kilometers per hour at 40 degrees west of north relative to the ground. All right, so we want to determine the velocity of the plane relative to the ground. So what we have is the plane, the air, and then we have the air and we have the ground. And then we, we want to find the velocity of the plane relative to the ground. So we want to, we're going to use P for plane. Um, A for air. Um, or capital A, you can use capital A too. Um, and then I'm going to do G for ground. All right, so what we've been given is V sub um, P A. So this is the plane, 510 kilometers. This is the direction, 65 degrees north of east and relative to the air. So this would be V sub and it would be P A. And what do we know about this? It's 510 kilometers per hour, and it's 65 degrees north of east. All right. The next velocity is the wind. Wind is blowing at 90. So wind is blowing 90 kilometers per hour at 40 degrees west of north relative to the ground. So that would be V sub, and it would be A, G. Okay, and V sub A, G would be um, 90 kilometers per hour. 
and the direction is 40 degrees west of north. Okay, so, all right, and then we want to find, what we want to find is um, the velocity of the plane relative to the ground. So that'd be V velocity of the plane relative to the ground. So we want to find V sub PG. Okay. So all of these are related. Okay, so we got to start, if we want to find V sub PG, that's going to equal velocity of PA. And we're doing this one, with one dimensional, it works in two dimensional too. So the velocity of the plane relative to the air, and then we're going to start with the air relative to the ground, right? And we have that. So plus the velocity of the air relative to the ground. So if we add these two vectors, we're going to get this vector, okay? And to add these two vectors, I got to find the horizontal piece here and the vertical piece and the horizontal piece here and the vertical piece, okay? But the problem is it's it's a verbal description of the direction, right? Not an angle. It'd be great if we had the angle, right? In fact, that's what we need, okay? So we're going to draw a picture of this and we're going to translate it into an angle, okay? So, so this is north, and this is south, and this is west. Today I'm having a tough time north, south, east, west. I don't know if you've noticed that. I have to think, okay? So we're doing 65 degrees north of east. So that would be in this direction right here. So we're, going, we're rotating north from the east, all right? So we're starting east, okay? And we're going to rotate this way, and it's 65 degrees. So this angle is 65 degrees degrees. Well, that's also my angle of rotation theta, right? So in this, when it happens to be in this quadrant, the angle that I give you here, okay, and the angle of rotation happen to be the same thing. Remember, this angle of rotation always has to start on the positive x-axis. So what we know is V sub PA is equal to, now we can rewrite it as 510 kilometers per hour at 65 degrees. Okay, now we need to do this one too, okay? So for this one, okay, this would be north, this would be south, this would be west, and this would be east. And we know it's 90 kilometers per hour, but the angle is 40 degrees west, okay, of north. So we're starting, this time we're starting north and we're gonna rotate 40 degrees, right? So we're rotating this way. And we know that this angle is 40 degrees. Now, that's attached to this one that's 90 degrees, right? And so my angle of rotation, I'd have to start right here and go all the way to here. So notice I've rotated past the 90, right? And how much more? That one's, so we're going to have to use the 90 degrees to get my angle of rotation theta, right? And so my angle theta would be, theta would, we would take 90 degrees and add the 40 degrees, which gives me an angle of 130 degrees. So this V sub AG is actually equal to 90 kilometers per hour at 130 degrees. Okay, so now what we need to do is find the horizontal and vertical components of this, the horizontal and vertical components of this, add the horizontal pieces together, add the vertical pieces together, and then I'll have the horizontal and vertical components of this vector right here, okay? So V sub P, V sub P A of X is equal to the 510 kilometers per hour cosine of 65 degrees. And V sub P A x would be 510 kilometers per hour sine of 65 degrees. So this is the horizontal and this is the vertical. Uh, I wrote x and I meant to write y. That should be y right there. Okay, and then this one we can break it down into the horizontal and vertical components. So v sub a g x is equal to 90 
kilometers per hour, cosine of 130 degrees, and V sub AGY is equal to 90 kilometers per hour times sine of 130 degrees. Okay, so that means V sub PG and the horizontal component, so I'm going to put an X for the horizontal component, is equal to this horizontal component, which would be 510 kilometers per hour cosine of 65 degrees plus this horizontal component, which is 90 kilometers per hour cosine of 130 degrees. So that makes V sub PG X, the horizontal component of the vector we're trying to figure out. Okay, I'm gonna type this into my calculator. Okay, so 510 cosine of 65 plus 90 cosine of 130. And we get 157.68. So the horizontal and vertical components, I want you to round to two decimal places, okay? So 157.68. All right. And now we got to figure out the vertical component. Okay, and I should say this is kilometers per hour. And so now we need to find V sub P G Y. So that would be this horizontal component or horizontal vertical 510 kilometers per hour sine of 65 degrees plus 90 kilometers per hour sine of 130 degrees. So that makes V sub P G Y equal to, okay, 510 sine of 65 plus 90 sine of 130. And we get 531.16. And that would also be kilometers per hour. Okay. So we now we have this horizontal and this vertical component. They're both positive, right? So when I go to draw this, I know I'm going to go right 157.68. So 157.68 kilometers per hour. And I'm going to go up 531. Point one six kilometers per hour. And so my resultant vector is going to be in this direction. Okay, so now this would be my V sub PG. It'd be this, this would be the velocity of it. And then I got to also find the angle. Now this is going to be nice because my angle right here, okay, is my angle alpha is also going to be equal to my angle theta. So let's go ahead and let's do the, let's do the a magnitude of it first. Okay. So V sub PG is equal to the square root. We're just using Pythagorean theorem here and it'd be 157.68 squared plus 531.16 squared. So that makes the magnitude of this vector and square root and parentheses 157.68 squared plus 531. You wouldn't actually need parentheses for this one. It's just I'm doing it out of habit. Squared and we get 554 um, kilometers per hour. Okay, 554.1. So this one I'd like you to round. The magnitudes, I, these horizontal and vertical, I want you to round to two decimal places. And for the final magnitude, I want you to only round to one decimal place, okay? So 554.1. And 
kilometers per hour. So the plane was airspeed was 510, right? So the air is actually causing it to go faster, right? That's what this is telling me. It's going faster than, than just going um, without the wind, okay? All right, now what direction is it gonna go because of this wind, right? Because it's not gonna go the same direction it was going. Okay, so we gotta get our alpha and our alpha is tan inverse of, and it's gonna be the vertical piece, which is 531.16 divided by 157.68. Okay, and this, for angles, I want you to round to the nearest degree. So we're gonna press second tan and I'm gonna use a fraction bar here. So 531.16 and then 157.68. And we get an angle of, since that's a four, it's gonna stay 73. So 73 degrees. Okay, so what do we, what do we know about this? Okay, so we know V sub PG is equal to 554.1 kilometers per hour at 73 degrees. Because I should have said this, theta is 73 degrees also, right? Okay, and so you could also describe this with words, okay? You wouldn't have to, but the velocity of the plane relative to the ground is 554.1 kilometers per hour and it's gonna be 73 degrees. We're gonna to have to rotate 73 degrees. And this is north, and this is south, and this is west, and this is east. So we're gonna to have to, from the east, we're gonna to have to rotate towards the north. So that'd be 73 degrees north of east. Okay, so I know that it's like, man, that's a lot of calculations. I, I, get, I get it, but really the, the idea is, you got your two vectors, right? You got to get the horizontal and vertical. Well, you got to, if, if they're written in the description form, you got to get the angles, right? So you got to get the angles. And then from there, get the horizontal and, com and vertical components of each. And then for our resultant vector, okay, which in this case is V sub PG, we need to add these two horizontal components. And that's going to be our new horizontal component. We're going to take our two vertical components and we're gonna add them and that gives us our new vertical component. And now because we have these horizontal and vertical components, I can draw a diagram with those and know the direction I'm gonna go, right? And then I can find the magnitude by just Pythagorean theorem, okay? And then I can get the, the reference angle or the angle of the triangle by taking tan inverse of this over this. And then depending on where this is, okay, if it was in this quadrant or this quadrant or this quadrant, right, you're going to have four different directions it could go, okay? But because it's going this one, the, actually the, the direction angle and the angle of the triangle turn out to be, in this case, the same angle, 73 degrees, okay? All right, you guys, that's it.